Well, hello everyone. My name is Dara Rath and I'm the pastor at Faith Lutheran Church in Port Elgin, Ontario, Canada. And each week I bring you a story written by other authors. Some of them are funny and some of them give you something to think about. <clears throat> and this week's uh, story is a funny one and it's called The Ladybugs. And it's written by, uh, by, sorry, it's written by Hannah Doherty Campbell. My cycle of high school friends and I have known each other for 50 plus years since our days at West Philadelphia Catholic Girls High School. Janice gave us the nickname, The Ladybugs, and we embraced the title for our busy lives and non-stop chattering about the past, present and future. We talk of high school art classes and who worked on the 1969 yearbook, who sang in the Glee Club, and who played in the orchestra before <clears throat> we, we sequestered into estrogen dosages, hot flashes, and how did we ever get to this point questions. We gather at restaurants or each other's houses periodically for friendship, fun, comfort and celebration of our imperfect lives. Most times we exchange little tokens with ladybugs in the motif. It never gets old. We've enjoyed museum visits, all-you-can-eat buffets, afternoon teas, and many other adventures. I was aware that many restaurants didn't enjoy seeing us enter and tie up the table for hours. So I offered to host a potluck supper for us at my house. I enticed them with my offer of steamy stuffed peppers and wine that I'd brought back from Maine. Only the best for my buddies. The roses I had purchased at a local farmer's market just didn't have that flair, that spark of autumn I was looking for in my dinner party decor. But I was leaving work, I spotted vibrant colored leaves peeking through the parking lot fence. Well, I've plucked berries from bushes and called rose, called rose hips from hedges to make wine. I've spied purple asters and bittersweet along rutty paths and pulled them to take home. I've trespassed on railroad tracks to secure bunches of lilies of the valley, all while looking over my shoulder and hoping a township police officer wouldn't arrest me. And now, I couldn't break the branches fast enough. These beautiful leaves were every color, every combination, and I planned how I would lay the branches around the roses, tipping them toward each diner's plate. I would even tuck a sprig into each napkin ring. I was sure my friends Janice and Kathy would be blown away by my display. I was a veritable Matisse. We enjoyed a wonderful dinner with Janice's salad, Kathy's casserole, Mickey's appetizers, Chris's soup, and my main wine, and Kathy's chocolate cake. All heavenly offerings amidst the love for each other that binds us together. As my ladybug friends departed dinner, I divided the roses and branches into bunches for each person to take home and enjoy the glory of nature. The next morning, my eye was red, then my hands, neck, and torso. I realized that those leaves must have been poison ivy or poison oak. I raced to my doctor for prescriptions to ease the torture and called out of work for a week. Then I started eating lots of Ben and Jerry's, thanks to the steroids I was on. I had to tell the other ladybugs, Mwah. in an email, I told them to get rid of the flowers and leaves fast. So far, so good. Everyone was fine and I breathed a sigh of relief until Kathy called me to say that she had blotches on her neck and was itchy. You're going to need an ocean of calamine lotion, a phrase from the song Poison Ivy by the Coasters, played over and over in my head. The worst part of the entire ordeal was that I passed on the misery to my dear friend Kathy, 
who also lost time from work and had to seek medical attention. Not thinking, I sent her a get well flower arrangement and she later mentioned she balked at receiving it lest it also have allergic property. The ladybugs call this the poison ivy incident. And so one year later, to commemorate the event, I hosted a party with headpieces made of artificial li silk leaves and the words to poison ivy printed and placed on each plate. We began to sing the song together, laughing all the way. This time, my table centerpiece was composed of Benadryl, an empty steroid bottle, hydrocortisone cream, Caladryl, and an empty Ben and Jerry's carton. They forgave me. That's a wonderful, funny story about a group of women who gather together and have a wonderful time. Um, my nursing students, we graduated 57 years ago, and we gather together at Sable Beach once a year, and we have a great time, and it reminds me of this story a lot because we have so much fun and uh, enjoy each other's company, and we pick up where we left off um, 57 years ago. So, blessings on your day. I hope you enjoyed this story, and we'll see you next week.